In this video, we're going to look at electric dipoles and their electric fields. So when a charge separates such that there is the same amount of positive and negative charge a small distance apart, it forms an electric dipole. Dipole meaning two poles, one positive and one negative. And since we treat a dipole as a single object or as a whole, the net charge of a dipole will be zero. Dipoles can be created or induced by moving charge around, but there also exist permanent dipoles, such as water molecules. So water molecules have a positive side where the hydrogen atoms are and a more negative side where the oxygen atom is. Another example of dipoles is a dipole antenna, which is pretty easy to model and has a practical application. Since dipoles occur in nature and have these practical uses for us, it's important that we understand them. So we'll model the dipole as equal positive and negative point charges that are small distance d apart. We'll place the origin at the halfway point of the dipole for symmetry. Points to the right or left of the dipole will have electric field of each charge that are in opposite directions. This means they will partially cancel, but the closer charge will win and have some field left over since it's stronger. Above the origin on the axis running between the charges, the y components of each charge will cancel, while the x components will be equal and in the same direction, so we'll just find it for one and double it. For our analysis, I'll label the field from the positive charge with a plus sign subscript and the minus sign subscript for a negative charges field. Now we'll look at the electric field along both of these axes mathematically, and we'll begin with the x-axis the dipole is sitting on. To get the overall field along the x direction, we'll add the field from each charge at some point x along the x axis. So x represents where we're looking for the field. The positive charge is not quite a distance x away. We must subtract the distance from the origin, or d over 2, half the separation distance. And the negative charge is the distance x plus half the separation distance away. So it will be x plus d over 2. Be sure you don't get lost with these signs. There'll be a lot of plus and minus signs floating around, so be careful to keep track. We can simplify this a bit by getting a common denominator. And when you do this, most of the terms in the numerator will cancel because of the minus sign. And we're left with this. Now, we want to look at the field of a dipole when we are far away or far field along this axis. Mathematically, Far away along the x-axis means where we want the field, or x, the point where we want the field, is much greater than the separation distance d of our dipole. Since d will be negligible relative to x, we can ignore the d over 2 terms in the denominator since x is so much bigger. This leaves us with the product of x squared and x squared, or x to the fourth. Now we can simplify canceling one of our x's and get the following for the electric field of the dipole far field on this axis. Before we move to the perpendicular axis or the bisecting plane that runs between the dipole, we will define the quantity q times d to be the dipole moment. If you think about it, q and d are the defining characteristics of a dipole. If you know the magnitude of the positive and negative charge of the dipole, and you know the separation distance, you pretty much know everything about the dipole except for the orientation that we'll account for in a second. Keep in mind our definition of the dipole is equal positive and negative charges, and they're separated by a small distance. Notice we define the dipole moment to be a vector, which is going to account for the orientation of the dipole, because it matters which side the plus charge is on and which side the minus charge is on. We'll define the direction of the dipole moment vector to point from the negative charge to the positive charge. And based on our definition, the units of dipole moment will be coulomb times meters. To write the electric field more generally now, we can replace x with r and q times d with the dipole moment p. r here just represents the distance between the center of the dipole and the point on the axis where we want the field, just like d x did in our example. So we do this because if our dipole is not oriented along the x or y axis, and it's just oriented in some other direction, we can use r as the, this distance the same way we did x in our example, and we can get a general expression no matter which way our dipole is pointing. Now we'll quickly look at the electric field on the perpendicular axis. The y components cancel, so we only have x components, which will be equal, and in our case, in the negative x direction. We'll put in our negative sign and a 2 to account for both charges. 
the distance away will be r, our hypotenuse of this right triangle. And to get the x component, I'll use the angle at the top of the right triangle, meaning the x component will be the opposite side. And so to find the opposite component, we'll use a sine function. Sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side will be not d, but half of d, half of the separation distance, or d over 2. And then we'll divide by the hypotenuse, which will be r. Simplifying, our 2's will cancel, the 2 from half the separation distance and the 2 from accounting for both charges. They will cancel and we'll replace Q times D again with our dipole moment. Now notice that the electric field along this axis is half the magnitude of the field along the other axis uh, that the dipole was oriented along. Not only that, but now it points in the opposite direction of the dipole moment. The electric field of the dipole along the axis that it was pointing along was in the same direction. So that's it for this example. Uh, we'll probably see dipole electric dipoles again. There's something that's very common. And that's why we define the dipole moments because this quantity Q times D ends up showing up over and over again, depending on uh, what you're studying. And so we'll probably see it again in the future. In the next video, we'll look at more electric fields. We'll start moving into continuous charge distributions. So I'll see you in the next video.